I'm Bella, the Maker Mama Boss Lady behind Bella's Custom Crochets. And that's going to be the last time you hear me say that in a podcast. If all goes according to plan. More on that coming in a second. But this is episode 28 of my podcast. I'm a crochet designer and a knitter. Um, crochet by trade, knit by hobby. Um, and if you are just joining me here, thank you for stopping by. I hope you find something that makes you happy. And if you've come back, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, you can find everything that I'm going to talk about linked down below. There's going to be a link over to my blog with very detailed show notes about any yarns, designs, the like. Um, and anything you need to know about me as far as social media is also linked down below the video. So pop down there for all the good stuff and uh, give it a like and a subscribe while you're, while you're at it clicking around. Um, so I have some very exciting stuff to talk about admin-wise. So let's get into that. Um, I've kind of been alluding to some changes coming for a while, um, and I'm still not going to tell you full details, but um, like I said, Bella's Custom Crochets is who I am currently. Um, I'm still Bella, <laughs> but um, March 19th, it is currently March 1st when I'm filming this, 2021, March 19th, if everything goes smoothly as we have planned it, um, there's going to be a major rebrand happening. So there's going to be a name change. So you're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed at this point so that you don't lose me. Um, we're going to have the website and everything reroute. I'm not sure how it works on YouTube though once the name change is over. So subscribe now so I don't disappear on you. Um, all the old content is going to be staying up under Bella's Custom Crochets on this channel. I'm not starting like a new channel, so everything that's already here will stay here. Um, but there's going to be a name change and the website's going to get um, kind of overhauled. I got a new logo and all my name, uh, my names on all the platforms are going to change as well. So if you're subscribed to this channel, you'll be able to find that all linked down below the videos um, come March 19th. So I don't want to announce it yet. I'm going to keep teasing it a little bit. So please stick around and um, I'm really excited about it. Just... I don't recommend changing your business name if you can at all avoid it. Um, Bella's Custom Crochets is kind of a name that, not that I hate it, but it no longer really reflects um, my business as it is right now. When I, I think I started using that as my main like business name in, I don't know, 2015, 2014, something like that, 2013. <laughs> um, so it's been around for a while, um, but it was kind of like a, Mm, that'll work kind of name. And what we're changing over to uh, is what I want to stick with. So kind of a big pain to change over everything, but uh, excited to do that. And yeah, stick around. There will be good stuff in store. Um, and also we just hit 2k here on the channel. So thank you very much. If you're already subscribed and you're one of those 2000 people, I can't believe that 2000 people want to sit and listen to me um, ramble about yarn and designs and frogging stuff and the like. Uh, <laughs> So I'm just blown away that there are 2,000 of you and growing, um, and I really appreciate that. We are going to be doing a giveaway. Um, I keep saying we, it's me, um, and when I say we, it's usually because my husband Jojo helps me with a ton of stuff as far as the website, so we are kind of a team, but it's just me here. Um, there's going to be a giveaway somewhere in the realm of the relaunch, because I want to do a relaunch slash 2K-ish giveaway, although the numbers might be higher by then. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Subscribe, notifications, all of that. Um, so the next uh, couple weeks, there's going to be some other stuff going on. I'll talk about that in the design section, but um, I'll probably do a premiere when I do the um, name changeover. So stay tuned. I'm so excited. And my new logo is really, really awesome. And I wish I could show it to you now, but I'm secretly paranoid that someone will go and steal my name. So no, can't have it. It's mine. So at this point, we're going to jump into the design section, but I probably should mention what I'm wearing because um, I usually wear some knitwear and talk about that. But what I'm wearing is a shirt made by a local artist called Block 21 Prints. I've talked about her a bazillion times and I've used her stickers and giveaways and stuff. Sarah May, Block 21 Prints. She makes lino cut um, linoleum stamps, block prints it onto stuff, makes super cute stickers. Is awesome. Um, so that was a very loud vehicle and I apologize for people driving very loudly on my dead end road. Um, but it's got like a Rosie the Riveter type... This is a really awkward way to show a shirt, guys. Um, <laughs> see the Riveter type gal on here. And uh, she's got some paintbrushes and knitting needles. No crochet hook, but, you know. And it says creating for a cause. Um, and she does have this, uh, the shirt in different styles. Um, this is the baseball tee. Um, 
but for the sticker, she has it in all different skin tones. The shirt, it's kind of just the background of the shirt. Um, but she does, I don't think I have a sticker, but I've given one away um, before when I have one on my laptop. But um, she has a whole range of skin tones for the We Can Make It stickers, which I think is awesome. And then she has another one that's like five or six, like little muscle arms in a row that also say We Can Make It in all different skin tones, which is real cool. So I want to share that with you because I love Sarah. Um, but design-wise, we have a lot happening in March. <laughs> we're launching a new business. We're not launching a new business, but we're revamping the business I have, and then we're launching two patterns as well. Next week, this one has been a long time coming, the Hope in the Future wrap is finally um, going live. So if you guys haven't already grabbed a kit from Meg, I believe pre-orders have already ended. I don't know if she's going to be doing another round or a non-pre-order round or something, but um, pre-orders ended today, I think. So kits, I'm not going to try to amp up here, but this yarn was um, done in collaboration, or the design was done in collaboration with Meg's and Co. Yarn. And um, we've been talking about this design since, I think, July of 2020, like her and I going back and forth. So I am so excited to put this one out into the world. And uh, it's just a really special design to me. I don't want to go into it in detail here because I am going to do a pattern drop video. So this will be releasing on the 12th, March 12th. Um, and if you are following me and Megs and Co. over on Instagram, we have some exciting stuff in store for you next week. And last week on my blog, I did an interview with Meg as well. So if you want some more Megs and Co. in your life, go check that out. And even if you didn't get a kit, I would highly encourage you to either make your own kit or just check out Meg's yarn for other projects, knit or crochet. She does absolutely gorgeous. Like, I love this. This is my favorite section. I gotta go. <laughs> just fold it up. I'm unfolding it. This red, black, or like, I love this so much. Um, and she actually custom dyed this red for the design because she didn't have a red that really was suiting what I was looking for. And she's just been super accommodating and is just a, a lovely human. Um, and sometimes collabs like work out well and you're like, well, that was good. But with like Meg, I would collab with her anytime, any place. Um, she's just been really, really great. Um, so hope in a future wrap coming by the time you're watching this next Friday. So March 12th, mark your calendars. There will be a pattern drop video. There will be a pattern drop blog post and there will be all of the chattering over on Instagram as that design goes live. I'm going to be sharing lots of tester photos in the next week or so, um, and the testers absolutely killed it on this one. Uh, and those will all be in the pattern drop videos too, so stay tuned. So good. I'm so excited, and this is probably the design with the most meaning that I've ever made. Uh, so I'm really excited to put the pattern drop video up and kind of walk you through um, the whole inspiration and story behind it, because it's it's really, really special. So hoping a future wrap coming March 12th. And then, um, after the relaunch, so we got March 12th, hope in a future, March 19th, relaunch, rebrand, secret secrets, and then March 26th, these are all Fridays in a row, March 26th, I am taking part um, in a blog hop that's being hosted by Crochets by Trista, I'll make sure I link her in the show notes as well. The blog hop has started today, so you're going to have missed the first couple days of it by the time you're seeing this. Um, but if you're not familiar with blog hops, it's basically you hop from blog to blog. There's going to be 30 plus designers who have, um, I think they're all new patterns, um, springtime crochet patterns. And every day there's going to be one that's featured for free on um, whatever maker is the featured designer of the day. So today Trista kicked it off. It's her blog hop. But every day there's going to be... Um, another designer giving away a pattern for free, either on the blog or as a go download it on Ravelry for free, that sort of thing. Um, so my dandelion drops that I've been talking about in the last couple episodes, uh, the wall hanging with the fringe and the dandelion stitch, that's going to be coming March 26th, and it's going to be the featured pattern um, for that day. So every day you can snag from 7 a.m., 24-hour period, um, Eastern Standard Time, you can get the free pattern of the day and download it to your... Um, either library or computer or whatever. Um, but then the following day, it stops being a free pattern. So you gotta get on it, get on it quick. So if you've been holding out for the dandelion drops, um, it will be releasing on the 26th and it'll be for free for the first 24 hours if you get it through um, that blog hop link. So if you're not on my newsletter, I will be sending out something to remind you of any pattern release, but that one, if you like free stuff, um, 
yeah, this is my first time doing a blog hop and I'm really, really excited to take part in one. Um, it's, it's a lot to organize, I think. So I don't know that I want to organize them, but Trista's doing a great job and has gotten all these like graphics and seems really organized. So I'm excited to be um, part of it and there's no purchase necessary for any of it. It's not like you get a free download if you do this. Like they're just literally a free pattern every day and there's garments and, um, home decor. Mine's obviously a home decor kind of category. Shawls, toys, all sorts of good springtime stuff. Um, so go and jump over and give Crochets by Trista a follow for lots of updates and info, but I'll be sharing to my stories daily, the free pattern. And then yeah, mark the calendar for the 26th if you want to get the dandelion drops. So those are the two designs that are going to be launching in March. I don't know the last time I did two designs in one month. Not like I haven't been working on this since like, we started talking about it in July. I think I started working on it in like October or so, September, October, by the time I got the yarn and then like Christmas happened and then I frogged the whole thing like twice. <laughs> it, uh, just coordinating collaborations can be tricky because you have to collaborate and make two people's schedules work together. Whereas if I just buy the yarn and make it myself, it's a little bit quicker, but it's really awesome to have, um, like the kits and the cross promotion and just the teamwork. I love our crochet community. Um, so collabs are fantastic, but they do kind of take a lot more behind the scenes work than if I was just to go to the yarn store, buy some yarn and make a thing. But yes, months in the making, we are getting it out there. Um, and then I have one more design that is probably going to be later, and it's going to be later in spring because it's another fingering weight design, um, that I've been waiting on just getting these other two out there. So this, I'm not 100% on the name yet. I jokingly called it, let me show you. <laughs> it was in the cover picture, so you've kind of seen it. It's still in progress, but um, it's an asymmetrical triangle, very similar to the um, dandelion dance shawl shape, if you're familiar with that pattern of mine. So it's kind of like a boomerang triangle. Um, I might be able to get it all on screen for you, but yeah, I'm kind of swoops down and back up again. And it's obviously Roy Biv. I hope you guys can hear me when I'm holding that over my face. Um, obviously got some Roy Biv action going. There's going to be a really fancy... Um, edging that I still need to put on. Um, but I had jokingly called this or like called my design aesthetic green bow, uh, as in gray and bow, like gray and rainbow. Cause apparently that's what I do now. I did the Harrington Marla day in gray and rainbow. Obviously the hope in the future wrap is gray and rainbow. And now we're gray and rainbowing again, because I really like gray and rainbow. <laughs> so I'm tentatively calling this the rainbow shawl. I can't decide if I love or I hate that. It's kind of a cringy word, <laughs> but I think it's fitting. So I might come up with someone else. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really love, really love this. And I know giant fingering weight shawls might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I like them. So where I'm at on this is the shawl itself is done. I need to do the edging border situation. Yes, it's an edging if it doesn't go all the way around, right? Um, and then I'm trying to figure out today I started doing, I don't know if you can see the edge. It's got some texture to it. I did this stitch all the way around. I do want to have, um, a gray edge going around the whole thing just because I think it kind of weighs it down and keeps it from wanting to curl on you as much. Um, can we see that? I think we can see that. Yeah. So it's got... That edging, um, I have blocked the entire shawl, but not the edge, because I blocked it to make sure I, I had liked the size, um, and then started doing the edging. So, like, right now it's kind of pulling, but it'll block out. Don't worry. Um, but I'm not 100% sure that I like. I feel like it might be detracting from this stitch. Plus, if I put a really fancy, like, lacy is what I'm planning on border on this end. So I can either do this stitch all the way around and forego the awesome border on the end. But I feel like that's sad. Um, or I can just do, I haven't gotten all the way around yet, this plain single crochet on the edge. And I feel like I kind of almost like that better. But this stitch gives it an almost, it's like a, almost like an I-cord kind of thing. It's not an I-cord, but um, just like that rounded, more substantial edge. So I feel like it just kind of has more weight to it. I don't know. I don't want to do a second round of single crochet. What do we think? Do we like the flat edge? Or do we like the, where is the edge of the test? There we go. 
flat and textured. What do we think? I just don't want it to detract from this stitch because I think it's super gorgeous. Super, super pretty. Um, and this is a, other than having to do a little bit of counting, like every new section, it's a very repetitive shawl um, and not tricky. So that's fun. Cause like my dandelion dance one, you have to be paying attention pretty much the whole time. Cause it's a lot of, it's like a stitch sampler. So it changes a lot, which holds your interest. But this is kind of nice because once you get it down, you're just doing some increases and some decreases and you're going and you're changing colors and it's just, it's rainbowy and I love it. <laughs> um, so the yarn that I'm using for this one, hang on, I'm wrapped in it. The yarn that I'm using is all little scrappy bits at this point, but this is Treasure Goddess Yarns. I have the tags. Let me grab those. Treasure Goddess Yarns. This is left over from my Anuk pullover. Um, so this is the colorway Ghost Ship, the main color. And then the m rainbow colors are all Lean and Lotus with the exception of the red. I am petitioning <laughs> that Jen of Lean and Lotus makes a rainbow kit because whether for this design or not, I just feel like she needs to have rainbow minis. <laughs> I had gotten this set of autumn, a fall mini set, and then this set back here. These little guys, I am so bad at the backwards pointing. These little guys, um, so I think it was five and five or six and six or something, mini skeins. Um, and it was like between the two, I ended up with almost a rainbow, but I was missing a red because one was a grab bag set. So she gave me random colors and then I forget which ones were originally in the autumn. I'd have to go back and look, but either way, they're not in stock now. But she does super great minis. So Lane and Lotus, my fave Connecticut dyer. And this is just, um, Superwash in nylon 7525, as is the Treasure Goddess yarn. And then the random red that I happen to have a mini of is actually a two ply, so the texture is definitely a little thicker and different. And the color itself is, I don't know if you can see, the Lane and Lotus ones are pretty much a, a I don't know, is that a semi solid? It's not a tonal. Like I'd say that the Treasure Goddess is tonal. Maybe. I never know the difference between semi-solid and tonal. Does anybody know? Because I don't. But more variation in the gray, whereas the Lane and Lotus ones are pretty, pretty steady throughout. But then the red one, wrong end. The red one definitely has some more color variation in it. So that kind of annoys me because like that's clearly just orange and this is a lot of tones. Um, and it's also a different base. <laughs> but I'm okay with it. But if you were to make the shawl, I would possibly recommend not doing that. Um, but that one is by a chick that knits. Um, and just another random mini and that's a 80, 20 two ply. So it's definitely different. Um, but fun thing about minis is you can kind of throw them all together and this would be really fun with like more speckly colors and whatnot too. So yeah, I'm petitioning that Jen makes rainbow mini sets because they should exist. I'm just going to keep flinging this shawl back and forth and you're just going to love it because you love me, right? So that'll be coming later in the spring once I get that written up. All this stuff. March is basically, we're, we're booked for March. <laughs> so once March is over, I'll get that all written up out into testing. And then, I don't know, maybe in like May, something. I like to show you in advance just to hype things up and so that you actually know that I'm making something. So otherwise, I don't have any made content. Because um, I pretty much only design at this point. So those are the designs that I currently have on my hooks. Finished object wise, I have my, um, technically my January <laughs> socks. I was trying to do the box of socks thing and it's just totally not going to work out guys. But, um, yes, I know they don't match. Um, January socks. These are the bonfire socks by Potter in bloom. It is a free powder on her blog. That I would recommend to you because look at that texture. It's so lovely. Um, and it's basically free patterns. I'm gonna tell you, it's basically, you just throw in a random knit purl row. I think it's like every fourth row or something. So it's not a tricky stitch pattern to memorize. And I just think it looks really cute in this yarn. And this main color is Patton's Croy FX in the colorway Clover Colors. And then the gray is Patton's Croy in the color Flex. Um, so these are just both commercially available. I think I got them at either Joanne or Hobby Lobby or something at some point. They've been in my stash for a minute. Um, and yeah, normally like if you just knit it stock and that, I don't know if you can see on the bottom, it's just kind of like almost pixelated. It looks like marled, but I love the way that the ribbing, um, 
the texture of the stitch. Is there something wrong here? I think I sewed an end weird there because it's like munching out. Um, but yeah, I love the way that the texture just kind of pops those little flecks. Really good call for the Patton's Croy FX. I don't love it just in plain stockinette, but I love it like this. Um, and they obviously do not match. Um, generally with like a gradient D type sock thing, I, I don't care. And I actually ended up, I don't remember which sock it was. I think it was actually both of them. I ended up, I was trying to do 50 gram socks, um, but I made the cut or the leg a little too long. So then I like ran out. I think it's this one. I ran out like here. Um, or not ran out, but I wouldn't have had enough to do the other socks. So I ended up getting a second skein and like I had to split the skein and add some extra rows and then yeah. So this isn't exactly the pattern sequence that it should have been. This one definitely has more greens and blues and this one's definitely more like oranges and rusts, but I'm okay with it. I think they're great. Um, so I have not worn those yet. And those are, like I said, the January socks. So I'm supposed to have done one a month, maybe, possibly. Uh, you can jump back to my Box of Socks 2020 video for the breakdown of the socks that I made all last year. But I'm kind of casually just knitting socks. Um, it's a great on-the-go project, and In Between Designing is my go-to for sock knitting. So that sentence made no sense. It's okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so today's March 1st, and I I started my February socks like two days ago, so they're not going to be done for February because February is over. Um, but yeah, that's my finished object. And I have, I don't know if they're a whip or a finished object, so we'll throw them in here. Why not? Um, these are not something I'd normally be making, but I have joined, crinkle, crinkle, sorry. My church um, does like small groups, they call them life groups, and some of them are like Bible study based, some of them are like interest based, like they have like a motorcycling group, I'm not in that group. Um, and somebody launched a crochet and chat, and it kind of became like a toddler mom group on top of that. Um, so we're like all the same age range, we all have kids that are vaguely the same age range, sort of. Um, but most of us have toddlers who are at home, in a pandemic, so um, we've kind of made it into a toddler playgroup because our poor unsocialized toddlers. Um, so we are a toddlering and crocheting and just hanging out and getting out of our houses because good gracious. Um, and we decided that instead of everybody just kind of crocheting at random, because everybody kind of has different skill levels, I'm definitely the like elder. <laughs> I'm definitely the most long-term crocheter. The lady running the group has actually just started and she's really excited about crochet and it's super awesome and I love that she started the group because I have wanted to do something like that and I'm like mm, my house is too small. Mm, what am I gonna do with my kid? Mm, it's a pandemic and then she started one and I was like perfect I'll go to hers. Um, but yeah we have different levels of crocheters so we decided that we wanted to have a project that we could kind of do like a almost like an outreach with. Um, so we decided for Mother's Day for the women in our church, we're going to be doing um, little three packs of face scrubbies. And I think there's going to be some other um, little self-care items that our church is going to do like goodie bag, basket tape things for the moms. Um, so we have set out to make 150 face scrubbies. And this is a pattern by, ooh, I don't remember. I think it's Cro Cozy Rosie UK or just Cozy Rose. I will make sure I link it in the show notes. Um, but these are a really simple, we slightly modified it and made them a little bit bigger. Um, a really simple cotton face scrubby round. Super basic, um, puff stitch. Just cute. Um, and I was able to make like 14 in a two hour time period. So they're, they're quick. So if you're looking for a gift make, um, or want to bless some others in your life or something, uh, these are great. So we're going to package them up and just put like a cute little wrapper on them that just um, has like care instructions and whatnot. And yeah, so between our small group of ladies, we're going to whip out a bunch of these before Mother's Day and give them out and send some love to the mamas. Um, so my, my daughter is the, the oldest toddler that's there. The woman running it has kids who are off in school, but um, my daughter is the oldest of the toddlers by a little bit. And she, as you know, thinks she knows how to crochet and knit because that's all she sees me do. Um, so, really, so the woman running it was like, you can bring some toys. I don't really have anything. Bring something that she's going to, um, snacks, whatever. And I was like, no, she'll crochet. And they were like, 
<laughs> so I bought her some snacks and then I bought, brought, um, she usually has like double pointed, not double pointed, um, fixed circular knitting needles that she'll pretend to knit on, but I figured the needles were probably a little dangerous to run around other toddlers with. So she has a massive plastic crochet hook and some acrylic yarn and she just sits and she like wraps it around the hook almost like she's knitting or she has a crocheted blanket that she'll shove it into like into all the holes so I brought those and she literally sat on the couch like a large portion of the time she definitely played with the other kids too and ate snacks but sat next to me and she's like I'm making scrubbies for the mamas <laughs> like, does she actually know how to crochet no um, but she kept like wrapping up her yarn and then being it's a, it's a scrubby for the mamas here you go mama and then she was like rubbing this acrylic yarn on my face and I was like oh thank you darling she makes me so happy with her, her little maker heart. So that is my finished object slash whip. Um, yeah, I'm going to have made like 50 of them or something by Mother's Day. So I'm not going to keep showing you, but it's a really great free pattern if you're looking for a gift or even um, for like teens to throw in a Easter basket kind of thing. So I will link that in the show notes. Only other whip I have to show is the beginnings of my... I guess they're my February socks in March. Um, but these are a pattern. I'm kind of just winging it. I, the pattern that I did, um, another winging it pattern at the end of 2020, the last pair I did, I did almost a similar texture where I started out um, last time thinking I was going to make a blueberry waffle sock and then I kind of just did my own thing instead. Um, so I'm sure there's a pattern somewhere out there that is similar to this. But what I'm doing is I did a two by two cuff and then 64 stitches. I did two by two ribbing for four rows, then one row of knit, and then I switched, like I alternated the ribbing. So it's two by two, but I knit on the pearls and purled on the knits. So it creates this really nice, um, kind of a waffly checkerboard, really nice and stretchy, snug fitting sock. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm calling these my kettle corn socks. That's not the name of the pattern and I'm not writing a pattern, but the, just the colors remind me of kettle corn. And this yarn, um, they're both Lane and Lotus. Um, this is left over from my Le Pouf sweater. This was the color that I did right at the top. Um, so I had a ton of this left over and I wish I had done more of it in the sweater, but it was at the top on a top down sweater. I wasn't going back. Um, so it's going to be some socks now. I'm a little hesitant to have cream colored socks, um, but this color is called Meteor Shower. Um, and these are both on her two ply base. Twist sock, I think is the base name. Um, and then this is left over from another pair of socks. This is actually the third pair of socks that I've worked it into. Stretch those sock yarn dollars, everyone. Um, this is Salted Caramel by Lane and Lotus. So um, I did my simple skip socks and then the ones at the end of 2020 that I was making up uh, with this caramel color as the main color. And now it's going to be heels, toes, and cuffs. And these are going to be just more, not a shorty sock, but shorter leg than normal. Um, usually if I'm making a regular length sock, I do somewhere between like 60 and 70. I like a long-ish sock um, that I can kind of pull up in my boots. Um, yeah, just longer leg. Uh, but these are only going to be, I think, 50 or 55. And then hopefully I can get away. I had, I think, 57 grams or something left. So I should hopefully, maybe possibly, be able to make the two socks. <laughs> then we're going to throw in a random color on the foot. We'll find out. I do weigh as I go, but like, you know, nobody got time for that. So that's my only other whip. I don't have a ton of content because um, I have been working on website stuff and relaunch stuff and rebranding patterns and just all of the behind the scenes stuff that goes into changing your business name like a lot of years in. <laughs> so a lot of behind the scenes. and I'll be so grateful when that is just all out there and done. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that, like we've already said. The only other thing I have to share with you today, I didn't know I was going to have an acquiring section, but I acquired something. It came in the mail today, and I was like, ooh. Um, so this is something that I ordered. This was a, like, just because thinking of you, praying for you gift from, um, I don't have a lot of people on the internet that I would consider friends. I do have a lot of, obviously, the fiber arts community has been amazing, and I have a lot of people that I talk to on the regular but I do try to keep my crochet life separate from my personal life. I don't post personal pictures on my Instagram and I'm generally just a very private person. Um, so there's not a lot of personal stuff and you guys have seen that I keep my daughter out of it and all of that. Um, so yeah, personal life just doesn't end up on the internet really. Um, not that I'm not genuine with you guys. I do try to be really genuine, but you know, personal is personal, at least for me. I'm not an oversharer. 
I'm an undershare. <laughs> Uh, I do have a couple of people that I would consider real life internet friends, I guess, um, people that I really clicked with over the years. And um, Dana of Blue Daffodil Crafts is probably the number one. Um, she started following me. I think she found me or I found her. I don't remember. Um, but we found each other somehow back in 2017 or something. Um, when I started my personal Instagram and I would like occasionally post crochet stuff on there. I may have found her first because hers was not, I don't know. I don't know who found who, but she, I call her my OG follower because she has followed me from the beginning, like one of the first followers. And, um, she's also a Christian and just shares a lot of similar interests and a sense of humor and just a lot of similarities. She's like my yarn soul sister. And, um, I've loved having her as a internet friend. Never met her in real life, but um, we had been talking a little bit this last week, just some stuff going on, and she was just like, can I pray for you? And just like, really awesome. And then she was like, uh, I have something I want to send to you. Can I send, send, send you something? And I was like, sure, I like something. Um, so this showed up in my mailbox today. Look at this. Is that not the most bella e color you have ever seen? Um, so this is something that she had in stash. And I think probably for a while, because I think this is an old, oh, I think she had said five years, actually. She's had it for a bit, and she was hanging on to it and didn't quite know what to do with it. And then she was like, no, Bella needs this. So thank you, Dana. That's <laughs> really awesome. It's um, some Madeline Tosh, and it is Dream Alpaca DK. I have no idea if this color still exists or if this base still exists. I'm not up on the Mad Tosh. Like, this is still Madeline Tosh. She's just Mad Tosh now, right? I don't know. Um... But Dream Alpaca DK, 50% Merino and 50% Baby Alpaca, and the color is Lannister Gold. I said that right. Um, and yeah, it's a DK weight, 200 yards. And I definitely got alpaca fluffs in my eyes holding it up. Um, but hand dyed in Texas from wool ethically sourced in South Africa. Are the alpacas from South Africa as well? I don't know. But yeah, just the most beautiful golden color. And yeah, she thought of me. And I love that people associate me with mustard yellow. <laughs> and I love that there are people that I've never met who want to pray for me and support me and be part of my life. So thank you, Dana. That was really awesome. And she sent this beautiful little card with also some mustard yellow. And it actually matches my project bag. Like, look at that. She's so good. She's so good. Ooh, that was loud. She's so good. So I don't know what this is going to be. I do have the one skein wonder um, cowl that's DK weight, but that's like the only thing off the top of my head that I can do with one skein of DK. And it is alpaca, but because of the 50% merino, I don't think it will grow as much as an alpaca typically does. Like alpaca just tends to want to lengthen. Um, I could do a hat, right? Can you make a hat with one skein of DK? I don't know. I don't make a lot of hats. I should probably not make a hat because I don't wear hats. <laughs> but... Yeah, I do have this um, stash of single ply back here. These are all fingering weight. But this is Ching Fiber, um, uh, Shangri-La, uh, in the colorway Ember. I, might, I have unskeined these and they just look all cat wampus. But um, my parents picked these up on a trip to London. Remember when people went on trips? Um, on a trip to London, and I've been hoarding them because they're so beautiful and I can't go back to London and get some more. So. I don't know what to do with them, but these are technically fingering weight, but also a single. Um, so I could possibly hold them double and do something with this. Slightly a more bright yellow. I had been hoarding these two away with this other skein of Madeline Tosh. Right? Nope, Malabrigo. I lied. You're Malabrigo. Malabrigo in the colorway Cayenne, I think. Nope, Paprika. I'm just telling lies all over the place. Lying about my spices, lying about my yarn. All the lies. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I've been hoarding these, thinking that they could maybe go together in some sort of shawly thing. But single ply I'm always kind of wary of. It's like the most beautiful, but it pills, so I don't really want to make a garment. Also, what am I going to make with these three? Um, so yeah, now I have this other one that could possibly be friends. I feel like these two could be friends really easily. What's the yardage on you? 420, 200? So over 600 yards, I could definitely do a shawl or something. Yeah. So those are really beautiful. I think this might happen. 
This might happen. Look at it. It's got that same golden -y undertone. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these are going back here to be friends together. Oh, no, I put the ugly side of the skein out. We can't have that. Sorry, you're, you're watching this. I should have just done this later, but we've committed to it now, so here we are. So we'll put that there. Go with your friends. Get cozy. Put the tag with you so we know what you are. Okay, so, yes, that's from my friend Dana, and she's awesome. So that wraps up this episode. This is a little bit of a shorter one for me. Um, and like I said, this is probably the last one that you're going to be seeing under BCC. Um, so if you didn't already go subscribe and you don't want to lose me from your feed, or I guess that you still might be able to find me, but it's going to be harder. So <laughs> subscribe so I don't disappear on you and stay tuned for all the things in March. So much going on, but particularly the big relaunch. I am so excited to have you guys as part of my online fiber family, and I am so looking forward to where we're going to go from here. So thank you for watching and sitting and chatting with me for a little bit, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!